Hey guys, welcome to PatternLab.London. I'm Ralph and today I'm going to show you how to draft essentially this uh, basic stretch dress with this gorgeous neckline and also this side split. We have a different tutorial for that sleeve which I'm going to show you a little bit later on. So take a look, well, look out for that. Uh, but right now we're just going to be working on this square neckline and this split as well. So first of all, before we get started, I want to give you a little bit of information about where to find these fully editable digital basic blocks which you can obviously use to follow this tutorial. So first of all, I'm just going to go to, let's say, uh, Google. So first of all, we have two different ways that you can actually get access to these digital blocks, and they will be um, posted in this tutorial post, or there'll be links to this at the bottom of the tutorial post. So if you're on YouTube, just simply click the link in the description. It'll take you to that page, and you can then obviously have a look at those links. But first of all, if you type in designlab.london, you'll find that on the homepage, you will see two different stretch dresses. And they're two different ones because we have one which is applicable to 35% 35 35 stretch fabric and one which has 20% stretch fabric. We also have one for 50%. It's not actually on there at the moment, but I'll put that up before this tutorial goes live. So these are basically fully editable digital basic blocks that have been nested or graded based on UK or international standard sizes. So if you're not looking for a bespoke or made to measure block and you are looking for standard sizes, you can simply just click one of these blocks and download it and follow this tutorial. Otherwise, if you go to patternlab.london, on the homepage, you will see, if you scroll down a little bit, a whole range of different blocks, digital basic blocks that you can use, and these are made to measure. So for example, all you do is simply put in your, go to your profile, you then obviously create a new profile, which is go to test. You put in all 27 of your measurements, and we also have tutorials, video tutorials that show you how to take that measurement, also with instructions. Put in all of those 27 measurements, and then you simply go to draft block, and then once you're in the lab, so we've just gone to the lab there, you can then go to casual wear, and then under the casual wear tab, you'll find the stretch dress. You can even add the stretch ratio of your fabric. So it can be anywhere up from 17.5 cm, which is 75% stretch ratio, uh, for crosswise and lengthwise. And you can go through, we have different fit options. You have the automatic, you have custom or manual fit ease, which allows you to add all different eases to create a really, truly unique fit. We have different dart options, we have the length option, we have neckline, we even have the sleeve option as well. So once you've made all these selections and you've obviously chosen the profile you want to use, we also have standard sizes here as well. So you can simply select whichever standard size you want to use. You can then go to purchase and it will then basically draft that block using that profile and all of those different selections. Now this is all red because I haven't added those, but once you've added those, it should all be blue. And you can then either download it as a PDF or as an e-pattern which is really helpful. Okay, also, if you're not familiar with digital pattern making in Adobe Illustrator, we have a whole bunch of courses. So if you go to the courses tab on the patternlab.london homepage or on the website, go to the menu and go to pattern making course, you'll see we have a whole range of various different tutorials that show you how to basically uh, set up Adobe Illustrator as a pattern making workspace, and then how to do various, use various different tools, start manipulations, adding seam allowance, creating multi-page PDF sewing patterns. And then if you're done with that, you can also then check out all the various tutorials we have on, you know, um, we have different necklines, we have different sleeve styles, we have different dresses, all kinds of different options for you to choose from. And once again, these are all completely free uh, for you to watch. We don't ask you to sign up or subscribe. Um, anyway, let's get back to actually digitally pattern cutting uh, this neckline and this split. So for the sake of this tutorial, I've just simply created a bespoke stretch dress for Francesca, which is my lovely partner, and I've just simply saved it to the desktop. Okay, this is an e-pattern version, so just download it as an e-pattern, save it to your desktop, and we're just simply going to open this up in Adobe Illustrator. Oh, hang on, that's the SVG. Let's just drag that down to Adobe Illustrator, and here is our block which has been drafted specifically to fit Francesca. What we'll do is, because I don't want to basically destroy this existing or original copy, I'm just gonna to go to select all, and then edit, copy, and I've just created a new document here. Let's just remove this, sorry. I've just created a new document, I've added my title, and I've also put in that illustration just so you can see what we're actually drafting. I'm just gonna go Command V to paste that in. Once again, if you're not familiar with pattern cutting Adobe Illustrator, we have a whole bunch of tutorials that show you how to use it. So I'm not going to demonstrate here um, how to do that. It's more a case of you've done those tutorials and so now I'm gonna show you how to, let's say, draft this particular neckline already with that knowledge. 
a few tools just to highlight on very quickly. So if you hold down the space key on your keyboard, and you can then get this little hand, and if you click and drag, it allows you to move around the, um, the artboard. Okay, so really handy when it comes to, let's say, maneuvering around your pattern. If you hold down the command and then hit the plus key on your keyboard, you can zoom in. If you hold down the minus, so command and then minus, you can zoom out. So using these two tools, you can move around your pattern very easily, which is really helpful. Okay, so let's start drafting uh, this gorgeous neckline. <clears throat> so as you can see, if we go over to this image on the right hand side, we're going to add this really rather quite cute sort of like neckline. And not, this would normally be quite a simple process, but because we're using stretch, we have to add a bit of compression to this pattern. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that in a second. First of all, it's really important to mention that, um, was it Tanya, lovely Tanya, one of our fantastic pattern cutters, she basically created this neckline and also this gorgeous sleeve for this dress. She even made this dress as well. So um, <clears throat> she showed us this tutorial and we just thought it would be fun to digitize it to show you guys as well. So thank you so much, Tanya. You can see Tanya's work at YouTube on AUK Fashion School or on Instagram as at AYUK underscore 2020. And we'll put a link to her in this tutorial blog post as well. Okay, so let's begin. So first of all, I want to focus on the front of my, let's say, stretch dress. So first of all, what I'm doing is get my big selection tool. I'm going to click on this pattern here. I'm just going to simply drag it off to the right-hand side. I'm going to hold down the shift key to make sure it's still in line. It's not really that important, but let's just move this all over. Okay, so what I'm doing is get my big selection tool, which is this black icon here. I'm just going to click on this block. I'm going to go object and then, where is it? Ungroup. There we go, I'm just going to click on group, object, and then ungroup. You can also, if you see here, you can see the shortcut. So this is also shift command G to ungroup this. So shift command G, 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 just to ungroup. So first of all, I'm going to draw on my neckline, and then we're going to add some compression. So first of all, I'm going to create a point. And to do that, I'm going to go to my ellipse tool here. And once again, if you're not familiar with any of these tools, then please watch our pattern making tutorial, which is on the Pattern Lab courses page. It will show you all of this information and give you a really good start when it comes to digital pattern making in Adobe Illustrator. So let's just go to my circle tool. I'm then just going to, uh, let's say, click. And I'm going to type in 0.5 and 0.5 cm. <clears throat> click OK. And that will just create a nice little point for me. I'm then going to simply place this point at the underarm line. And I'm also going to place a point directly opposite. So for example, if I've got my big section tool, click on this point here. I'm going to go to the center of that. I'm going to click and hold and drag it off to the left-hand side. I'm going to hold down the shift key. That will lock it to that access. Hold down the option key, which will duplicate it. As you can see here, we're duplicating that point. I'm just going to move it over to that center front line, which is great. Next, I'm going to measure the distance between the center front line and the armhole. I'm going to do that very simply by going to my line tool. I'm going to click at this point and drag, click and hold and drag until I get to the armhole. And as you can see in that gray box, it tells me it's 20.85 centimeters. So the reason why we're measuring this is because we're going to be using percentages. We want to, because obviously, um, I don't want to give you a measurement because obviously your block might be larger, it might be smaller than the block I'm working with. It might even have a different stretch ratio. So we're going to work in percentages, okay? So I've measured that line, and if I want to find the measurement of that line, I'm going to go to Document Info. You can also go to Window, and then Document Info. And as you can see, it's 20.84 here. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this point. I'm going to go to my calculator, which is just here. I'm going to type in 20.8. I'm going to divide that by 100. I'm going to times it by 55%. Click OK. And that gives me 11.44. So essentially, I'm going to mark a point 55% along the measurement of this line. So once you've measured this line, you do the calculation. And then 55% for me is 11.44. So let's just grab that point. With my big section tool, I'm going to grab that point. I'm going to hit the Enter key and go 11.24. I believe it's 11.24. So let's just do that again. I'm going to grab that point with my big section tool. I'm going to click on that point. Let's just go Calculator. What was it? It was, sorry, it's early morning, so I'm a little bit uh, rusty this morning. So it's 20.8 divided by 100 times 55%, which is 11.44. Get my big section tool, click on that point, hit the enter key on my keyboard and go 11.44 on the horizontal axis and zero on the vertical. And you can preview this, you see? It shows you where that point's gonna be. 
I'm going to click copy because I want to retain that point. Copy. Okay, so next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw. Let's just get rid of this point here. I'm going to get my small selector tool. I'm going to get rid of this. Hit backspace a few times. <clears throat> I'm going to get my pen tool. I'm going to click on this point and then this point and then this point. So that is essentially my new neckline, which is going to look gorgeous. I'm then going to get my small selection tool. I'm going to click on the line then click on that point and click and drag it past. So I'm clicking and dragging it through that point, but past or outside that block. Same for this one. Click on that point. I'm going to click and drag it past that point. Next, I'm going to go to my, let's say, stroke. So with this line selected, I'm going to go to my stroke. I'm going to go type in here. I'm going to go 0.2. So it's going to be 0.2 point line thickness and just hit enter. So it's really quite fine. I'm then going to go to object and I go to expand and I'm going to click fill and stroke a ticked and click OK. And what that does is <clears throat> that turns it from a line into an object. And we actually need an object in order to cut this block because right now I want to cut this panel out from here to here. So now with my big selection tool, I'm going to click on this line. I'm going to go object, arrange, and then bring to front. This must always be on top of our pattern where we want to cut it. So get my big section tool. I'm going to click and drag over both of these. And then I'm going to go to my Pathfinder tool, which is this little overlapping square icon. You can also go to Window and then Pathfinder. And I'm going to go to Minus Front. And you can see now that this has now been snipped from the main pattern. So we've used that object to snip from the main pattern. If I go to the Small Selection tool, click and drag, you can see that these are now two completely separate panels. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm just going to simply hit Backspace a few times. And as you can see, we now have that gorgeous new square neckline. Let's just move this down. So that essentially could be the end of the tutorial. Really simple, right? However, the problem is because we're working with stretch and this block is actually quite body con or it's quite fitted, there's going to be a lot of pressure and strain around these points because obviously the garment is smaller than the body, which means we have to add a bit of compression or suppression, whatever you want to call it. So essentially when this block has been put on as it is, you're going to get quite a lot of gaping and sagging around this area because there's no strength in this point. So we need to compress the block in order to take account for that. And what we're going to do is the way we do that is we simply just slash here, we slash here and we slash here. And we then move all of these panels in to make this line smaller and this line smaller, therefore creating a much tighter, more comfortable fit over the bust or around this neckline. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. So first of all, we're going to go back to this concept of using points and lines. OK, so first of all, I've got my point here. I'm going to get my big selection tool. I'm going to click on this point. Actually, first of all, I'm going to measure the distance. I'm going to get my line tool. I'm going to measure the distance from here to here. Now, I know it's 11.44, but let's just check it to make sure. So just click and drag with your line tool, 11.44. So now I'm going to get this point. I'm going to type, I'm going to hit my enter key. And in the horizontal, in fact, let's go to calculator. We're going to go 11.44 divided by 100. And then we're going to times it by 62.5%. Okay. 62.5. Hit enter, that gives us 7.15 centimeters. So here I'm going to put in 7.15, hit copy, and this is where we're going to make our slash at this point. Okay, we can now get rid of those two little formulas, we don't need them anymore. And next, what we're going to do is I'm going to get this point, get my big section tool, I'm going to click on this point here, and then going to go edit copy, which is also command C and command V to paste. So let's just click on this point here, command C, command V. I'm then going to click the center of that with my big section tool, drag it down to the waistline. I'm going to paste in another one and then click and drag it to roughly halfway. I'm then going to get my, with my big section tool. I'm going to click on this point, hold down the shift key, click on this point, hold down the shift key still, click on that point. I'm then going to go to align. I'm going to align horizontal and I'm going to align vertical. So that should be halfway between these two points. And let's just simply click and drag and move that over to that side seam. You can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard to nudge this point around, so left or right. So that's now our halfway point. I'm then gonna draw a line, so get my line tool, and then gonna draw a line between this point and this point. So this is where we're gonna cut the block and then rotate this panel in to add a bit of compression. But we've got a few other lines and slashes to make first of all. So next, I'm going to measure the distance, so get my line tool, I'm gonna to measure the distance between these two points. 19.86, which is great. Let's go to my calculator tool. I'm going to type in 19.86 divided by 100. 
And so the first one is going to be 40% of this line. So my slash marker is going to be 40% along this line, which is, uh, what is it, times 40, which is 7.94. So I'm going to take this point, I'm going to hit the Enter key. So once again, get your big selection tool, click on this point, hit the Enter key, zero to go horizontally, and we're going to go minus or vertically up by whatever that value was, I've forgotten now, 7.94. So we're going to go minus 7.94, click copy. I'm then going to, with this point selected, I'm going to go to my rotation tool. I'm then going to click the center of this point, and you can see that little blue sort of like, let's say, um, archive, well, little thing appears, which is your rotation point. I'm then going to click and drag the center of that and rotate it into that line. So I now know that that is 7.94. Well, it should be, hang on, 7.94, which is great. So next I'm going to take this point. Well, actually, let's measure that line again, 90.86. So next we're going to make our second point. Let's go to our calculator. So it's 19.86 divided by 100 times. 27.5, 27.5, which is 5.4. So here, I'm going to get this point and go up by, what was it? 5.4. So we're going to go, so once again, cancel, let's just select that point, hit the enter key. We're going to go zero horizontally, but minus 5.4 up. Hit copy. Once again, get your rotation tool, click on the center of that point. Then we're going to rotate it around that point, click and drag, just to rotate it around that point until we hit this line. So this is where we're going to be slashing on the neckline. Now we need to find out where we're going to be slashing on the armhole. So next I'm going to get my line tool. I'm just going to simply go to this top point here. And I'm going to click. I'm just going to click. I'm going to add a length of line, let's say about 10 centimeters. <clears throat> and the angle is going to be 336. Click OK. I'm going to do the same for the second point. So I'm going to click on the center of this. So go to my line tool. I'm going to click on the center point. And here, let's keep it 10. And then the angle is going to be 336. Hit OK. So now these are the areas that we're going to be slashing, or the points we're going to be slashing. I can then just get rid of these. Don't need them anymore. Now I'm going to get my small selection tool. I'm going to click on this line. I'm going to click on that point. And then I'm going to click and drag. And I want to make sure that it, it extends out from that line, OK? We always have to make sure if we're going to cut, if we're going to use this line to cut the block, it always must be outside of the pattern. It must extend past the pattern outline. Get my big small selection tool, click on this line, click on this point, click and drag out. There we go. Same for this one, small selection tool, which is the white one. Click on the line, click on the point, click and drag, click on the point, click and drag. Great. Next, get my small selection tool. I'm going to click and drag to select both of these lines. Hold down the shift key to queue up your selection. Click and drag this line as well. We're then going to go to the stroke width, make this 0.2. I'm making this 0.2 because it's a very, very fine line. If I were to make this much larger, like four, we would be cutting this block and there'd be gaps or spaces between these panels. The panel would be here and here, which is unfortunate. So if we make this as small as possible, 0.2, then we've only got a very small margin. We're not removing that much from the block. Then we go Object, Expand, click Fill and Stroke, click OK. So now these are objects rather than lines. Next we get our big section tool, click and drag, hold down the shift key, click and drag. We're then going to go Object, Arrange, Bring to Front. They must always sit on top of our pattern. Hold down the shift key, select the outline of the pattern, and then go Pathfinder, and then we have Minus Front. And as you can see, we've then just cut those panels up. So now this is a separate panel. This is a separate panel, etc., which is great. We can also get rid of some of these points. We don't need these anymore. They're just redundant. Let's just get rid of them. This one as well. I'm just simply big section tool, click on that point, and then hit backspace on my keyboard a few times. Grand. OK, so first of all, we want to make sure that we maintain uh, this little point here. This is the notch for our armhole. So I'm going to get my big section tool, click and drag over both the pattern. Oh, hang on. At the moment, it's grouped. So whenever you cut a block up, it always groups it for some reason. So just get your big selection tool, select it, then go object, and then ungroup. There we go. Now they're all individual pieces. I'm just get my big selection tool. I'm going to click and drag over that point and the pattern. I'm going to go object and then group. So now if we move it, it's going to maintain that point. If we didn't, we would lose it. So just big selection tool, click and drag over those two points, object, group. 
Okay, so now we're going to start compressing this neckline by moving all these panels in to reduce the size of this neckline. So what I'm going to do is I'm at my square tool or rectangle tool, and I'm just going to simply click at this point here. You see how we have that point there? It's going to click. And this will bring up my rectangle dialog box. And I'm going to go 0.7 here and 0.7 here as well. You can do exactly the same. Click OK. Let's zoom in. I'm going to use my rotation tool. Click on that point, and I'm going to rotate it until it lines up with that line there. OK, I haven't got, got that perfectly on point there. If we take that point, move it to that point there. Go to my rotation tool, click on that point, and then rotate it until it meets that line. Perfect. Next, we're going to go to the second one, get my rectangle tool, click on that point. This time it's going to be 0.5, both width and height. Click OK. Get my rotation tool, click on that point, click and drag until it's, or rotate it until it hits that line. And then here we're going to go, same thing, square tool, click 0.7, 0.7, click OK. Go to our rotation tool, it's not quite on that line. You can use your arrow keys to nudge this around, or you can just grab that point, big section tool, click, and then drag that into the correct location. Go to rotation tool, click, and then rotate that down. Great, so this is how much we're going to be compressing this uh, neckline by. So first of all, get my big section tool, click on this upper panel, go to my rotation tool, click on this point, and I'm going to rotate it until we hit the far bottom corner of that square. So we're basically compressing this or removing 0.7 from this neckline, which is great. I can now get my big section tool, click on this thing here, this little square, and just remove it. We don't need it anymore. Next, with my big section tool, I'm going to click and drag over both these panels because we're now going to rotate both of these at the same time. Get my rotation tool, click on this point, click and drag, delete that. Now we're going to get the whole of this panel here. So I'm just going to get my big section tool, click and drag this panel, go to my rotation tool, find that point, click and drag and then we can get rid of that square. So once again, we haven't taken anything from the outside of this block, okay? This line is still the same length. This line is still the same length. However, we have reduced the size of the neckline dramatically. And this just allows that block to pull in and create more of a tighter fit around the bus. That's really important. It's either called compression or suppression. It's completely up to you what you want to call it. And I'm sure we'll get some comments mentioning how that's wrong, but we'll find out. Okay, so next what I want to do is redraw my neckline or redraw this whole upper block. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to select and then all. That selects everything. And go to object and then lock selection. And so now we can't edit anything, which is great. So next, let's just go for a nice color. Let's go for blue. So I'm going to go double click on the line here. You see, you can if you click this, this is the fill. If you click on this, it's the stroke. Double click it and you can then pick a color. So I don't know, like that, for example, pan lab blue or something similar to it. And then I'm going to get my pen tool, which is this icon here, pen tool, or you can hit P on your keyboard. And I'm going to go from the waistline, click that point. I'm going to go up. And essentially, I want to find a line that's drawn out from here. So you know what? Let's start in the opposite direction. Let's go from the waistline. We can draw a straight line to the armhole. And then I'm going to go to my notch point. So click. I'm then going to go to my shoulder tip, click then to my, um, let's say, side neck point, click, and then down to this point, click, and then I'm going to go across the block. And I'm going to hold down my shift key, and that will lock it to the horizontal, so we know that line is perfectly horizontal. Just hold down your shift key and it'll lock it. Then let's go to the center front, click, and then down to the waistline. So this is me, and then just to make sure you get off this pen tool, just click on the big section tool. And what we can do is get our big section tool. We can click on this and we can make it, let's say, a two point line. So we're just going to the stroke here and just making it two or three point. You can make it as thick as you like, just to highlight it. So this is our new neckline, but we need to add some curvature here because obviously we're missing the armhole. So I'm going to go to my, where is it? Oh, it's not here for some reason. Okay. In that case, I'm going to go to Shift Option C, Shift Command C. No, let's find it. Okay, let's go to this little palette here. There it is, anchor point tool. This is what I'm looking for, it's shift C. So if you can't find the tool, just go to your edit toolbar, click add anchor point tool and just chuck it in here somewhere. There you go. I'm looking for this one. So it's it's essentially like a, an open triangle. So let's click on this little anchor point tool or hit shift C on your keyboard. 
And at this point, I'm going to see that little anchor point. I'm going to click and then drag. And what that does is it allows you to create a curve. So all I'm doing is if I go close to the point, it gets more acute. If I go further away, it becomes more obtuse angle. And if I rotate it around, you can see that you can rotate it to create a nice curve. Once again, this is all in our pattern making tutorials on the courses page at Pattern Lab at London. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to move this point out. I'm tracing the bottom armhole at this point. I'm then going to release. I'm then going to click on this handle, pull it in. I'm trying to keep it in line with that bottom. Let's say, um, see how that kind of makes a nice straight line. Hopefully you're trying to keep this a nice straight line. So we're just mapping the top, the, the armhole and also that top edge there. Same with this one, let's go back to that anchor point tool. I'm gonna to click on this top panel and I'm just gonna curve this in to kind of <clears throat> average out those points, okay? Lovely, and also don't worry if this happens, that's fine. Just go to this little handle here, click and then drag it back to that point. And that's pretty much all the shaping we need to add. Okay, in fact, we should probably add a little bit here as well. So click on that point, Oop, other direction, click and hold, drag it up a little bit. I'm gonna hold down the shift key to lock it to the vertical. And let's just move that up ever so slightly. There we go, just to add a little bit of shape into the waist. So that is our new neckline. But we kind of need to add this to our existing block, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm going to go to Object, Unlock All. So now we have access to that existing pattern, you see? Get my small selection tool. I'm just going to click and drag on these points here, or these, these let's say, panels. And I'm going to hit Backspace a few times. As you can see, we're just deleting that. I could do the same for this one, but I'd lose the whole block, you see? So we don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to my small selection tool and I'm just going to click on this line, click on that point and drag it to about here. As long as it's within the pattern, it's fine. Same with this one. Just going to click and drag it inside. Next, we're going to get our, let's say, big selection tool. I'm going to click and drag over both the pattern we created, the new neckline, and also our existing pattern. And I'm going to go to Pathfinder and this time we're going to use Unite. And there we go. That's our new block. We basically just united this panel and this panel. So just big selection tool, click and drag over both of them, and then the Unite option on Pathfinder. And we can also change, uh, let's just small selection tool, click on the line, double click, let's go to black. Click OK, there we go, lovely. Okay, so now, once again, we have compressed this whole neckline area, which should give us a much nicer, tighter fit around the bust and the neckline. Okay, so really important. We're not gonna do anything to the back because essentially we haven't changed that shoulder distance, okay? The back is exactly how it should be. But I am gonna increase the line width, so I'm gonna get my small selection tool, click and drag, and let's go to the eyedropper tool, which basically, the eyedropper tool just allows you to pick up any element. So if you have this selected, you can then click on this line and it'll take the attributes and apply it to this block. You see, you can do all kinds of things with it, which is great. Okay, so next we're gonna focus on the split. In fact, no, actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some facing. We're gonna, gonna we have to create a facing for this uh, neckline. And we're gonna do it for the front and the back. Okay, so to add a facing to this dress, it's really simple. We're just gonna do the same, we're gonna use the same techniques we would in manual or yeah, manual pattern making, which is just with paper and pen. So I'm basically gonna trace off this block. I'm gonna trace off this block as well. But first of all, you know what, at the moment, this is separate and we want to kind of make sure that this is all contained together. So if we move it, it's not going to cause any problems. We're not going to lose information. So I'm going to hit my big section tool, click and drag over the whole of the block and then go object and then group. Same for this one, click and drag over the whole object, object, and then this one's already grouped, so that's fine. So now when we move it, it's all one piece, which is great. I'm also going to extend my artboard a little bit so we have a bit more space to work in. So I'm going to hit command option on my keyboard and P. This will bring up the document setup dialog. Just go to edit artboard. And let's just increase the size of our workspace just by clicking and dragging that out. And then hit the big section tool to get off it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this block here. I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna get my big section tool, select the block, edit, copy, edit, paste. So we've just essentially copied that block. How quick and easy is that? Same for the back. I'm gonna get my big section tool, select the block, object, sorry, edit, copy and then control V to paste it in. Okay, so let's create a facing, which should be good. Okay, so for the front, it's really, really simple. We're just going to get a line. And in fact, you know what, what we can do is use this bus line. So I'm gonna get my small section tool. I'm gonna to click on this line here. So I'm just gonna click or click and drag over this line, hit the enter key on my keyboard, zero horizontally, and let's go down by about six centimeters, for example. Let's hit copy. 
and now we have a line. This is basically, my, my facing is gonna be this upper panel, so I'm gonna cut the block using this line. That's your small section tool, we can move that down, there we go. So I'm gonna get this line, small section tool, click on the line, click on the point, drag it out, and then I'm gonna to go to line options, I'm gonna remove the dashed line, and let's just make it 0.2, and it's really tiny. Let's just change the line fill to be black so we can see it a bit clearer, there we go. I'm gonna get my big section tool, I'm gonna to click on this block, I'm gonna go object and then ungroup. We need to make sure that that is ungrouped before we cut it. We're then gonna get my big section tool, select that line, object, arrange, bring to front. I'm gonna click and drag over both of these to so the outline of the pattern and that line. And then gonna to go to Pathfinder and then minus front. And that didn't work. <laughs> Why didn't it work? Okay, let's have a look. Okay, quite more often than not, it's because this pattern isn't one unique piece. So to do that, to get your big section tool, click on the outline of that block and then just go Unite. And you won't see any changes, but what that does is it just creates, it makes sure that there are no openings or cut lines on this block, it's one whole piece. Okay, let's try that again. Big section tool, click and drag, and then Pathfinder, minus front, and it didn't work again. And the reason why is because we haven't expanded that line, that's why. So I'm gonna my, go to my line, click on that line, go to Object, Expand. So it was a line, and now this will become an object. Click OK, try it again. Yay, it worked. Okay, good. So now we have this panel. So now we have this panel, which is gonna be our facing. So now we just need to remove it from the rest of the block. So I'm gonna get my big section tool, click. I'm gonna get Object, and then Ungroup. So get my big section tool, I'm gonna click and drag over the lower half of this whole of this block. I'm just gonna hit Backspace. This is our facing for the top. I'm gonna get my big section tool, click and drag, object, group. I'm gonna do the same for the back. So let's have a look. We went six centimeters down from that bus line. So my small section tool, click and drag on this line. Then we're gonna go hit the enter key on our keyboard, zero and then six, hit copy. Then I'm gonna select this line, my small selection tool, small selection tool, select the line, click on the point, drag it out. Let's go to the stroke option. Let's make that 0.2. Let's remove the dash and let's just make that black so we can see it. And then we're gonna go object, expand. Click okay. Then we're gonna get our big section tool. This is all grouped. So let's get our big section tool, click on the pattern. Let's go object, ungroup, just to make sure it's not grouped, which it isn't. Big section tool, click and drag over both those elements. Oh wait, so hang on, this is grouped as well. Let's just go object, ungroup. So that's independent, this is independent. Let's also make the object that's arranged, bring it to the front. Click and drag over both these objects. And then we're gonna to go to minus front. And you see, okay, so look, if I do that again, you can see that our notches were included in that selection, which is why we're getting these little remove points. So I just wanna make sure that that is ungrouped completely. So big section tool, click on the outline, go object, ungroup, or shift, command G a few times, that should, ungroup it completely. So now it's just the outline, there's no other bits included, which is good. Click and drag, then go to minus front, and that has worked perfectly, which is great. Once again, big section tool, click on the outline of the block, object, ungroup it, click and drag over the lower half, and then hit backspace a few times. And then once again, let's just get big section tool, click and drag, object, and then group, to make sure that they are all there we go, they're unique panels. Great, so that is going to be our facing for the back and front of the skirt. Next, we're gonna look at creating this really lovely this really lovely split. So basically when I created my block, I specified that the waist to the hem or the hem of the dress would be 70 centimeters. This is a really lovely length. It comes to just below the knee, or let's say maybe 10 centimeters below the knee, as you can see here. So it's a nice length for the dress. Um, this means we're gonna need to put in a split roughly about 40 centimeters down from the waistline, okay? So let's just create that split now. So we're gonna locate that split and it's gonna be 40 cm down from the waistline. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is, I'm with my small selection tool, I'm gonna select this line, just click and drag, hold down the shift key, click and drag the waistline on the back block. Okay, so once again, small selection tool, click and drag, click and drag, holding down the shift key, and then I'm gonna hit enter on my keyboard. I'm gonna go zero horizontally and 40 vertically down, click copy, and there is our 40 centimeter measurement. Get the line tool, just have a look. 40 centimeters down from the waistline. Click and drag this point out, 
can drag this point out. So this is the location where our split is going to begin, which is great. Now this is really simple to do. I'm going to get my small section tool. To add this split is really simple. Small section tool, select the outline of our pattern. We're then going to go to the scissor tool and we're going to snip here and here. Do exactly the same on the back panel. Small section tool, select the outline by clicking on the line. Then go to snip, snip and snip. Get my small selection tool, I'm going to click and drag. See how, see how these have now been snipped from the main pattern, so we can select them independently. Object, we're going to go to Path, Offset Path, and we're going to add, let's say, a 2CM little flap to this. So basically that's going to fold to the inside, giving us a nice clean edge here when it's sewn together. So once again, let's just do that again. So get my small selection tool, click and select both of these lines, go to Object, and then Path, Offset Path, and you can do it by 1.5 if you want. That's double our seam allowance, or you can do it by two. It's completely up to you. Let's do 1.5. Click OK. And so now we have this offset path. So I'm now going to clean this up and create our flap. So with the small section tool, I'm going to, in fact, let's grab this line. So let's get a small section tool and hold down the shift key, select this selection or this line as well. Hit the enter key. And we're going to go vertically down by 1.5. Hit copy. Great. So now it's another guideline. We're basically just saying that this is 1.5 cm down from this point. Get my small section tool, click on this line here. I'm going to add. So I'm going to use my add anchor point tool. With this line selected, I'm going to add an anchor point there. And then I'm going to go to this one, small section tool, click. I'm going to go to add anchor point, add the anchor point. And then I'm going to go to the minus anchor point, which is just here. I'm going to minus that, minus that. And then I'm going to go to my anchor point tool. Actually, first, I'm going to go small section tool, click on this point here. There we go. And then I'm just going to grab that little handle and move that in. Grab that little handle with my small section tool and move it down. Next, let's just go to our cut tool. So I'm going to select that line. I'm going to snip it here. And I'm going to snip it here. Snip and then snip. And get my small section tool. I'm going to remove <coughs> the inside piece. We don't really need it. Remove the inside piece. And then I'm going to get my, oh, that should be there. And that should be there. Not sure why it isn't. Okay, so I'm going to get my inside lines here. Let's get my small section tool. Select this line. Hold down the shift key, select this line. And I'm going to go to my line weight. I'm going to take it down to 1. I'm going to make a dashed line. I'm going to make it 30 and 10. And that's basically, for Pattern Lab standards, that means it's a fold line. So you'd fold that in and baste it. And then just to clean up this pattern, I'm going to remove these lines. Get my small selection tool. Click and drag. Hit backspace a few times. Backspace a few times. I'm next going to get this line. So click on that line with your small selection tool. Click and drag that point out. Click and drag that point out. Then we're going to click and drag over both those points with the small selection tool. Right click, join. Click and drag over those two points. Right click, join. And then now, because I know these two points aren't actually joined here, you see, I'm just going to select this pattern, go to my Pathfinder, and then just go Unite. And what that does is that just joins the block. Same with this one, Unite. So that is basically how we add the split to our block, which is looking fantastic. Now, essentially, you could put some information here. So if you get your text tool, you could put here, so um, what is it? Cut, split on left side only, if you wanted to split just on one side. So I think with our pattern, let's have a look. We only have the split on one side, which actually creates quite a nice feature. So we would say, you know, cut split on left side only, for example. And you could add that to both sides. But it's up to you. Okay, great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add some seam allowance to this to finish off the pattern because this is all we're doing for this tutorial. It's just the square neckline and also that uh, little split. You can also here, if you wanted to add, um, let's say, a hem, you could do that very simply just by getting your small section tool. Click on this line, hold down the shift key, click on this line, hit the enter key, and then vertically down by 1.5. Hit OK. And as you can see, those two edges move down. You could then get your pen tool, click on this point, move it over to the right-hand side, hold down the shift key, which for some reason isn't working. Let's go back. Let's go to the pen tool again, click on that point, and it's not working. Okay, just simply click, and then it should, you can see you get that little pink line. Just simply move it off to the other side and just add your point. Get the small section tool to click off, get the pen tool once again, Click, move it over, find that horizontal, click, and then click off. So that's your hem. So now what we do is we're going to add some seam allowance to this also, just to finish off this pattern, okay? 
So let's just get our sleeve block, get the eyedropper tool. Let's just select the attributes of that line to keep it consistent. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my small selection tool. I'm gonna click and drag over all of these blocks here like that. And then gonna go object, path, offset path. And then I'm gonna choose 0.7 centimeters for my seam allowance, which should work with my serger or um, overlocker. 0.7, as you can see, it's been added because we've got the preview on, just click okay. And there is our seam allowance. Now, what I like to do is to indicate what the cut line and what, what the pattern line is and what the cut line is. So I'm gonna get a small selection tool. I'm gonna get my pattern line. I'm just gonna hold down the shift key. So small selection tool, click, hold down the shift key, click, click. Holding down the shift key, click. And I'm just gonna go to line and then take it down to one. And so now you can see this is our pattern line. This is our cut line. So the cut line is two points. The pattern line is one point. And just to clean this block up, I'm just gonna make absolutely sure I'm a big section tool, I'm gonna to click and drag over this panel. Go object, group. Same with this one, control G, move keyboard to group. Control G, just tidy it up. Control G, control G. You can just move these in. Click and drag, move these down here if you want to. You can tidy it up, make it, put it wherever you want to. Let's also change the artboard. There we go. That could be your pattern, for example. Um, okay, we can also change, we can also add grain lines and labels. Ooh, also one other thing, because this is C, cut on fold, at the moment we have a seam allowance, we want to remove that. So just go to your small selection tool, click and drag in. You see how that's now on the center front. Small selection tool, click on that line, click and drag that in. Lovely, same with this, click and drag. And then same with this one, click and drag, there we go. So that's our center front sorted. You could even do it down the bottom here. Look, you probably don't want an extra 0.7. So you could do that as well. There we go, because that would be your, let's say, hemline. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Next, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add some labels to this. So we're gonna take the labels we already have. So I'm gonna get my small selection tool. I'm gonna click and drag over this entire label. Unfortunately, we've got this line selected as well. So if you hold down the shift and option key, and then just click and drag over that line, it'll remove it from your selection. And then you just go, edit, copy. And then go edit, paste. You could then move that over here. You could then rename it. So stretch dress back panel. This could be back interfacing panel. Okay, it's not actually center text. Let's just go center. Let's just ungroup that. Let's align it. Let's bring that into the center. Group. Okay, let's just, what is it, align it. There we go, group it, okay. And then we just can simply chuck this on here. And now it's important that you have the stretch ratio. So when you're out putting this, the labels, you pretty much wanna keep the straight. So it just indicates what stretch ratio we're using here. But there's your back interfacing panel. You could even put on here, cut times one on fold. So this is just an afterthought. You can do this if you want to, it's completely up to you. I'm not gonna dwell on it, but essentially you just wanna add your labels and you can even shrink them down as well you can put that there for example so this would be front interfacing panel cut one on fold okay so that's pretty much it when it comes to creating the stretch dress with this beautiful neckline and also that split so a really lovely tutorial that's reasonably simple and straightforward but will have really fantastic results so next tutorial we're going to start focusing on this really rather lovely sleeve um, which tanya has also kind of created for us we're going to digitize that tutorial also and don't forget to subscribe to us on youtube instagram twitter pinterest whatever your platform facebook and obviously take a look at the patternlab.london website for more free tutorials and obviously those digital basic blocks. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.